All right, Bible readers, it is time for another quick Bible study, and it comes from our reading in Psalms 140 through 150. And my first thought is to, there's, there's a lot in these 10 chapters, but one of the things that first jumped out at me was in Psalms 144 and verses three and four. And these verses really help keep me grounded and kind of keep my perspective on my position, you know, in, in the kingdom of God, so to speak, like this will keep you humble. So Psalms 40, 144 verses three and four says, Lord, what is, this is David writing, by the way. He says, Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? So it's like, in other words, why? It, it's amazing that God even acknowledges us, but he does. He created us. He loves us and, and all of that. But still, we need to be humble. And then he goes on, or the son of man, that thou makest account of him. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. So we all know how quick a shadow can kind of just come and go. And, and that's, that's how David is describing our life. So let's, let's keep ourselves in perspective. Let's not think too high of ourselves. So here's something else to consider. Psalms 145.3 says, great is the Lord. And again, there's that Lord in all caps. So we're talking specifically about God here and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Okay, this phrase caught my attention. And his greatness is unsearchable. So here, here are my thoughts on this. I, I think this is still true today. I think there's no, there's no way that a finite person can completely search out an infinite God. So, you know, does this mean that God's greatness is now searchable? Well, it is, but it doesn't mean that we're ever going to get to the end of it. So think about what, um, what David didn't have that we have now. So David only had the first five books of the Bible. And, and not only that, but the apostle Paul was a thousand years away. And what Paul was given... Paul was given two things that no man, no other man was ever given. He was given the mysteries of God. And he was the minister of the dispensation of the grace of God. Okay, so what's interesting about mystery or mysteries is that it only shows up in the Bible 27 times. But guess where 20 of them are in Paul's writings. So Paul was the one when, when he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, and then there was a period of time where he was, you know, caught away and he was shown things that no other man was shown. And then in his writings, he talked extensively about mysteries. And so when people today go, uh, you know, well, God works in mysterious ways. That's less true now because of Paul than, than before, because now we know all Paul explained all of the most relevant and important mysteries, you know, the mystery of Christ, the mystery of our salvation. There were so many mysteries that Paul explained to us in his, in his writings. And sadly, most churches kind of skip over Paul. They, they love to stay in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they kind of hopscotch. Oh, they pick and choose a little bit in Paul's writings, but then they go right into James and Peter and first John and all of that. And some churches get just, just stuck in revelation. They always want to talk about, you know, apocalyptic things and end time things. And they get, they get really stuck there. Okay. I think that's really uh, a sad state of affairs. Paul was given the mysteries. Paul was the one that taught us how to walk this Christian life. We need to focus on Paul. Okay. I'm rabbit trailing a little bit. <clears throat> so I want you to notice that I put the entire verse list, all of the verses where Paul mentions mystery or mysteries, it's in the description. So check that out. And it's just, it's just the highlight. It's like a highlight reel of those verses, but feel free to go look up the whole references or whatever, but it's super interesting. So here's the deal. We can for sure know more about God than David could ever imagine. Again, David had a limited um, knowledge, you know, written record of God and his uh, activities and his behaviors and, and things that were written about God in those first five books. We have 61 more books that tell us about God, what he's doing with mankind and all of that. So 
the question I have for you is, are you searching this vast library of 66 books that we have to learn about God? And if you're not, ask yourself why. We have a vast library of books, far more written knowledge than David ever had. And yet, most Christians don't actually read it. And that's really what this Bible challenge is about. I don't care if you agree with me or disagree with me about whatever. My only primary goal is to get people that say they're Christians to actually read God's words and do it more than once, ideally. Okay. That's all I got. Uh, check out the notes. There's a lot of other information in there. And um, hey, have a great Bible reading. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks. Appreciate you being here.